I hope the audio is okay. I I cannot check it right now. So let's just start. And like always, we start with the beginning by searching for Tiny Eleven. And the let's say official way to download the official path is from Internet Archive. Here is the where he has it. Everything else, every link, every other link would be like a third uh, third party link. And um, if you download it from Internet Archive, you know that uh, this is. Um, exactly directly from him from N nt dev he's the guy who made this or them a team i don't know now once on internet archive after you search on google or whatever you use whatever uh, engine you use you end up here and it's very simple very straightforward you have the iso image and you can download the latest version. Usually the latest is on top. Now, because uh, the problem is that Internet Archive is very slow, has a very slow bandwidth. So I, I will not go on with the download from here. I already have. I already have um, Tiny 11. Let me pull it up on the screen. I already this, uh, did this before yesterday, so in the end you don't lose uh, much information. You just click on it here and the download should start automatically. But like I said, it will take way too long, so I'll just cancel this. And yeah, basically that's it. Oh, the next thing, like yesterday, you need Rufus or Balena Etcher, if you like that, I prefer Rufus, it's way easier and, and especially with Windows, it's way easier to create a bootable USB. And the same, you search for Rufus, you go on rufus.ie, download the latest version or portable, whichever you want. And once you have them both, the ISO and the USB, uh, the ISO and Rufus, all you need is a um, USB stick, 8 gigs or 16 gigs, 8 gigs must be also enough and you just start flashing the image. Okay, wait a second, I need to... One moment. I need to clear something here. Okay, so I have my USB. Yes, I have it right here. You just open Rufus, you don't need to install it. I guess everybody knows at this point what Rufus is. You select your USB if it's not automatically discovered by Rufus. You go on disk or ISO, you leave it like this. You press on select and you choose your ISO. In my case for today, it's Tiny11. Now, GPT, you leave it, UE, uh, UEFI also leave it how it is, really not that complicated, standard Windows installation in case you want uh, a portable Windows, if you want a portable Windows USB, then you press on Windows to go, but in rest you just leave it how it is, and press on start. Again, here there are already all the settings from yesterday. Remove uh, remove requirement for four gigabytes plus RAM. Remove requirements for an online uh, Microsoft account. Disable data collection and so on. Here, except the one in the middle, I have them all checked. 
this is pretty easy and straightforward. And press OK. OK. And that's it. Now all you have to do is wait. I mean, if you know how to do it with Ghost Spectre or the regular Windows, then you know how to do it with all of them. It's really, really, really not that complicated. Up until this point, there is basically nothing that separates uh, that, yeah, that uh, makes Tiny11, uh, the process of uh, flashing Tiny11 different than Ghost Spectre. The only thing that is easier with Tiny11 is um, the downloading part. On Go with, uh, well, you download Ghost Spectre, then you need to go through all those hoops and uh, URLs from link to link to link. I find this pretty annoying, but I get that he needs also to make some money from the ads from the all those websites. And yeah, while uh, this guy who, who made Tiny11, he uploaded directly on Internet Ar Archive. It's like a statement that he doesn't want to make money out of it. Take from this information, uh, take the information how you want and do with it what you what you uh, will. But this is how I see it. I mean, in the end, you cannot blame none of them. The other one that wants to make some money with some ads from sending you from one link to another, or this guy who just put it on Internet Archive. In the end, both of them, all of them, all the mod at uh, Windows 11 or 10 or so, you ultimately install them at your own risk unless you made one on your own and then you know that um, you know for sure that there is nothing fishy about it but in rest with all the other ones no matter how what my personal opinion would be i will never say install it or or not because in the end you cannot be 100 percent sure that there is not a hidden script or something about them i'm just presenting them here as a look there it is kind of thing but definitely i will not say install it is 100 percent uh, safe i will never say unless i make one on my own but not even then you know you would still think hey is it is it for real unless i make it live maybe i will make one live i was thinking maybe in a future live stream to make a um, Windows 11 version, a modded one on my own, and then we will see. Okay, here's something weird. It says 97.9%, but the bar is not there. So what happened here? I was talking too much and I didn't pay the attention. Okay, that was just the copying part. I'm stupid. I didn't, I didn't read the entire thing. So I had to turn off the other live stream because it said something that it was not eligible. No, you go down. Anyway, I will just keep this on YouTube as the main and only live stream for today. Not that the other one is bring something it's also hard to focus with two at the same time okay so it's ready now close we see here I have done a video with the same argument, but mine will be post Sunday morning. Okay. Great. <laughs> uh, and what argument was that? That they are not safe or what do you mean? Or install it at your own risk.
So. Okay. And here, you know, you have to reboot your device, go in uh, BIOS, in boot menu, and from there, uh, select the USB. But I will not do this because of, you know, streaming. So I will make it through um, Hyper-V, virtual machine. Start a new virtual machine. I will name this Tiny11. Damn, I really need a backlit keyboard. I see nothing here. already dark here and I see nothing where I type so tiny 11 next gen 2 4 gigs no dynamic my network let's leave it at 50 okay select the ISO no yes you know select the iso next finish and now right click on it settings and give it four cores must be enough and yes connect start and now spam any key and you're in that's it. That was it. I have a question. Uh, when was the last, as far as you, you remember, when you started, when you installed Windows for the first time? How long ago was it when you installed Windows for the first time? <laughs> Windows 3.1, 3.11. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay.